Hello, hello, hello. Hello, everybody. Option traders, stock traders, investors, speculators. This is Lee Lowell from smartoptionseller.com. Today is Saturday, June 12th, 2021. Welcome to another edition of our Saturday YouTube videos. We talk about options trading strategies and things about those option trading strategies, specifically what's on your screen right here, the time decay of option prices. This is what we do. We talk about option strategies and things that affect option prices. And then a little later on the video, we do our Saturday synopsis, which I take a look at the stock charts, see what's happening, see what kind of patterns are developing, try to get a gauge for what's going to be coming down the pike. And if we can see any good setups happening and what strategies, option strategies, we would put forth in those trades. So let's jump right in and talk about time decay of option prices. I get questions every week about all aspects of options trading. And I got a couple this week specifically talking about time decay and theta and you know what is time decay and how does it affect option prices? And is it real? Does it really happen? And the answer to that is yes. Time decay is real. So let's step back for a second so we're all on the same page here. And let me explain to you what time decay is as it affects option prices. Now, anyone who's ever bought or sold an option, and maybe if you haven't done a lot of it, but but let's just say you've bought or sold an option, you, you pretty much know the option price on that day that you execute the trade, that's what you either paid for it or you received from, for it uh, if you were the option seller, you received from the option buyer. So you have that option price. Now, that option price doesn't remain static uh, while the trade moves towards expiration. As we all know, all options have an expiration date. And as you move towards that expiration date, the value of that option will change, obviously, and it will change accordance to how the stock moves. So the option price is going to change based on where the stock moves, how much time is left to expiration, and the volatility in the market. You have all these different things that affect, <clears throat> excuse me, that affect the options value or the options price or the options premium. Those are all the words that describe the options value. <clears throat> so what we're talking about today is time decay. And what that means is that Every day that an option is in existence, it's going to lose a little bit of its value just due to the sheer passage of time. As each day ticks off the calendar, the option value is going to give a little bit away. The option value is going to get stripped away a little bit each day as it moves towards expiration. And the thing about it losing some of its value is that it doesn't move in a straight line. It doesn't lose like, you know, five cents per contract per day. It, it has, it's on a curve and I'm going to show you that time decay curve. So what I want everyone to understand is that while the option, while you're holding that option position, whether you're an option buyer or an option seller, the option value slips away each day. So if you're an option buyer, you're not so happy about that because you're just giving money away day after day just because time is ticking off the clock. Now, if you're an option seller, which we are, we love time decay because we like making money just because time is going by. So most option buyers don't understand that. They don't think that, well, you know, if the stock doesn't move in my favor, you know, I'm going to lose money, but it's more than that. Yes, if the stock doesn't move in your favor, you can't make any money, but you're losing money to the passage of time as well. And I always use this, 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 uh, this example when I'm trying to teach time decay to people. Think of an ice cube sitting on the counter, right? At first, you don't really see a lot of that melting away of the ice cube, but over time, you can see it starts to melt away faster and faster and faster until it's just a, a, a pool of water. It's the same thing with option prices. If you're holding a very long-term option, like a, you know, a six-month option, you're not gonna see a lot of daily time decay of that option. You won't see a lot of its value get stripped away until you get closer to expiration. 
And that's what's called the time decay curve. And how you measure that the time decay at, in an options price, like how much that option will lose per day is calculated through theta. Theta is one of the Greek outputs of the option pricing model. And here at the Smart Options Seller, we talk about delta a lot. Delta is, is one of the most important Greek outputs of the, of the option pricing model. We talk about delta a lot. But theta, on the other hand, is very important as well because it can tell you, it can alert you how much money you're either going to make or, or lose per day as you hold your option position. Okay, so let's just take a look at the my little cheat sheet here and talk about time decay of option prices. Number one, all options are affected by time decay. Every option will lose a little bit of its value each day, but but time decay is not an equal opportunity employer. Time decay is greater for certain options and it's greater for options within the expiration cycle. So at the money options have the greatest or the largest time decay per day, no matter where it falls on the expiration scale. What are at the money options? At the money options are options with a strike price that is closest to the current price of the stock. So if the stock is at 100, the 100 puts and calls are called the at the money strike prices. Okay, so those have the, the largest amount of time decay, the largest theta per day. So if you're trading options, if you're a buyer or a seller of at the money options, your time decay is going to be the largest, okay? Now, the longer you give or the longer you have until the expiration day, the slower the time decay will occur. So if you're an option buyer, you know, it just, it seems intuitive that maybe you wanna buy a longer term option because if the stock doesn't move in your favor right away, you won't lose a lot of money to time decay. So that's why I always tell people, if you're going to buy options, stick to longer term options because you're not going to lose money just because time is ticking away, okay? So the longer the expiration, the slower the time decay. Now, as I said, time decay is an option seller's best friend and an option buyer's worst enemy because each day passes, you're gonna lose a little bit of value just due to the sheer passage of time. So as an option seller, you want that. You wanna see the option decay. Um, so option sellers think that, well, if I'm going to get all that time decay, well, maybe I should just sell very, very short term options like one day options or one week options. And yes, the time decay, time decay is very high in those short term options, but you have to play the at the money options. And when you play at the money options on very short dated, uh, expiration scale, you don't have a lot of error. You don't have a lot of room for error. The stock could jump or fall on you very hard and the time decay will be offset by what you'll lose because the stock moved against you. So you have to be very careful. So right here at the bottom, I'm selling near dated options isn't always the smartest move because, and I'll show you on in the option chain we'll look at, if you sell at the money, very short dated options, you don't get a lot of wiggle room. The stock could jump on you and you'll give up all that time decay profit because the stock has moved against your position. So be careful. If you're selling short dated options because you want all that time decay, you have to be pretty sure where the stock is going to move to, uh, you know, in your favor. And here, theta shows the actual dollar amount per day that is given up due to time decay. So let's take a look at the option chain. Actually, first, let's take a look at the, the option time decay chart. This may, this may help some of you visualize how time decay works in an option. So this is your standard time decay chart for options trading. Now what you'll see is it's broken up into 30 day chunks, starting at 120 days, going all the way down to zero days. Now the curve shows you how much the option loses to the daily de time decay. And on the, on the left-hand side here, it shows you how much uh, the premium is left in the option, how much how much price it still has. So as you can see here, in the first 30 days, from 120 days down to 90, this 30-day block, you can see the curve barely barely goes down. The, the option is not losing a lot of value to time decay. It goes from 100% to roughly 95%. Still, that option still has its 
you know, 95% of its value. Um, so it hasn't lost a lot to time decay. Okay, it loses lose about 5% of its value. Now in the next 30 day chunk from 90 days down to 60 days until expiration, still doesn't lose that much, only a little bit, loses about 10% uh, of its value from this curve. So you can see the little triangle here. You see the triangle small here, here this triangle, this right a 90 degree triangle right here. So from 90 days to 60 days, it really doesn't lose a lot of value either. The next 30 day chunk from 60 days to 30 days, it loses a little bit more of its value from about 85% to 70%, so about 15% of its value. So you can see as the closer we move to expiration, this 90 degree triangle starts to get bigger as we get closer to expiration. And then the last 30 day chunk from 30 days down to zero days, you can see how much it loses. It loses this whole chunk, loses, can lose 70% of its value on, down to that last day. So these 30 days right here is huge. Okay, so a lot, of, a lot of option sellers will try to concentrate on selling options in those last 30 days of life. But once again, if the stock moves really large in those last 30 days, that stock movement could overtake the money you'll make on the time decay itself. So you need to be careful when you're trying to sell very short dated options. Okay, there's always, there's always a trade-off. You know, there's no free lunch anywhere. But just know that the time decay, if you're an option buyer, it's much harder for an option buyer to succeed in the long run over and over again if you're buying these short dated options because if the stock doesn't move in your favor, you're just gonna give up all this money to time decay. All right, so let's take a look of uh, let's take a look at how that looks on an actual option chain, the actual option prices, and we'll see what happens. So here's the option ch uh, chain for uh, Microsoft options. Okay, Microsoft last closed at two hundred fifty-seven dollars and sixty-five cents. Okay, so we got calls on the left, puts on the right. So what you want to look at is uh, the two columns, well, the, co the theta column, all right? So if you have your option chain with your broker and you wanna know how much you can lose or make e per day, you look. You have to have the theta column. And every broker, every platform in their option chain should have a theta column, all right? So as I said, the at the money options has the largest theta. That's the, the amount of money you will lose per day, per contract, as each day passes. Now. We're looking here, Microsoft's two hundred and fifty seven dollars and sixty five cents. We're looking at the June eighteenth, twenty twenty one expires in six days from now, next Friday. Next Friday, June eighteenth. And when you look down the strike column, you go to the the at the money options, which would be the two fifty seven and a half a strike. Now it's the same theta is the same for puts and calls. Same amount of money will be uh, lost whether it's a put or call, doesn't matter. So the 257 and a half puts, uh, 257 and a half calls are over here. You're gonna lose 16 and a half cents per day, starting at six days left. 16 and a half cents, these are the calls here. Scroll over here. So roughly 16 and a half cents as well for the put options. These at the money options, 16 and a half cents. When you go down in the strikes or you go up in the strikes, you'll see how the theta numbers get smaller as you move down, as you move up in the strikes, or as you move down in the strikes, the theta gets smaller. The highest theta, as I said, is at the at the money strikes. So between now and tomorrow, let's just say the market was open today and tomorrow, these 257 and a half puts and calls are going to lose 16 and a half cents per contract just because we flip the calendar over to the next day. So if you're a a holder, if you're a buyer of, of either of the puts or calls, your your option value, your option position is going to lose 16 and a half cents a contract. That's 16 and a half dollars, 16 and a half dollars. You have to multiply this by 100 because each option contract ha is worth 100 shares of stock. So 16 and a half dollars you will lose between today and tomorrow just because we turn the calendar over to the next day. If you're a buyer or a holder of that option, you're like, wow, that sucks. I'm going to lose 16 and a half bucks just because we move to the next day. So as an option buyer, if you're playing these short-term options, you better make sure that stock moves in your favor very quickly. Otherwise, you're holding on to something that's just slipping away from you just because time's ticking away. 
on the other hand, if you're an option seller, you're like, yeah, I'm going to make sixteen and a half dollars in my sleep. I'm going to go to bed tonight. I'm going to wake up tomorrow and I'm going to be sixteen and a half dollars richer per contract. As long as the stock doesn't, you know, really fluctuate wildly against you. Okay. This is assuming that this is assume. Well, this, this is going to happen regardless, but if you're a holder of that option or you're selling that option, if the stock moves big enough in the direction, you will either, you can either overtake this money that you'll lose, um, just because the stock moved in your favor or against you, depending on if you're an option buyer or seller. Okay. So let's take a look at what happens. Let's go out to a longer dated option on Microsoft here. Let's move out to the November options has 160 days until expiration. So the, the, at the money strikes are either the 255 or the 260. We don't have the 257 and a half strikes listed. So here you can see the theta is about five cents per day. So the longer you have until expiration, the smaller the amount of money you'll lose per day as time starts to tick away. Okay. So between, uh, November and October, let's look at this 30 day chunk right here, a little over 30 days in October. Now remember the theta is about five cents a day in October. The theta is still a little over five cents a day. So you haven't lost that much money in that 30 day chunk between November and October, about two cents, you know, $2 per contract. Now, if we go to the September's, you'll see that the theta is now up to, you know, 5.7, 5.8 cents. So it's gotten a little bit bigger, not a lot, lost about five cents or $5 per contract per theta, for theta. Now, if we go to uh, the August options, now we're at 6.8 cents. So now you're looking at, you know, a dollar per day um, that you're losing uh, I'm sorry, 10 cents. It went from 5.7 cents to 6.8 cents. So now it's, uh, you're losing about $10 uh, that, that between August and September, you, the theta has gotten larger. Okay. Went from 5.7 cents to 6.8 cents or roughly 6.7 cents. So you're starting to see the theta get larger. Now, if we go down to July, the July options, the theta is, you know, 7.8 to 8 cents. So it's getting a little bit bigger. And then as we move into June, as we are looking here, the theta gets quite large. The two, 257 half puts 16 and a half cents. So as you get closer to expiration, you're going to lose more money. You're going to lose money faster or the theta, if you're an option buyer, if you're an option seller, you can gain that money faster. Okay, depends if you're an option buyer or option seller. Now we can look at the an option calculator. Let's go to iVolatility.com. You can use their, their option calculator. And you can see I have the same uh, Microsoft. I'll put the, the same price, 257.65. So we're kind of looking at the same numbers. Six days until expiration, June 18th uh, options. You can see the theta here is now they have it at about 17 and a half cents. So that all depends on, you know, not every calculator is the same, not all the numbers will match up, but, but they'll be somewhat close. So I volatility has 17 and a half cents theta per day where the option chain at interactive brokers has about 16 and a half cents. So let's move this out to, um, 150 days or so. And we'll see that the theta now, as five, you know, roughly five cents, five dollars, um, five cents per contract is what you'll lose overnight. Five dollars in actual dollars is what you'll lose overnight for these longer dated options. Okay. So if we go down 120 days, which is a 30 day block, theta is now 5.4 cents, 5.3 cents. You're only losing a a small amount. So as we go back to, let's look at this, put in 31 days until expiration. The theta is 8.2 cents, roughly 8.2 cents. And if we go down to one day before expiration, we'll see that theta is now 42 for almost 43 cents per day. So between, you know, one day left until day of expiration, you're going to lose at least 43 cents. If you're an option buyer, if you're an option seller, you'll gain 43 cents just due to the passage of time. 
okay? So that's how time decay works. Time decay is a constant. It's always moving, and it gets bigger and bigger as you get closer to expiration. So if you're an option buyer and you think you know where the stock is going to go and you say, I'm just going to buy a one-week option because I know this stock's going to move in my favor. Well, if the stock doesn't move in your favor, you're going to give up a lot of money to time decay. Now, if you're an option seller, as we talked about, you'll make that money due to time decay. But let's take a look here. Um, so the 257.5 puts with six days left, 16.5 cents of time decay. Well, you, you, if you're going to sell these options, you need to be pretty sure that this, you hope that the stock stays within that range. Okay, if you're, let's just say you sold the put and the call. You sold a, a, you know, a straddle, an at-the-money straddle, and um, all of a sudden the stock you know, blasts higher on you. You're going to lose money, and the time decay won't help you as much. So be sure, if you're playing short-term options, be sure you know where the stock may be going. Okay, so I'll bring up the, the cheat sheet one more time. Time decay, it's there, it's always there. It's part of an options value. And just be aware that it, 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 it does exist. And Theta can tell you how much money you can lose or make per day, depending on if you're an option buyer or seller. All right, so there's your, your little lesson in time decay. Let's move on to our Saturday synopsis, where we take a look at the charts. We look at the indexes. We look at individual stocks to see what's been happening. See what I see moving forward, looking for certain patterns, support and resistance points, and get an idea of you know what, what we could be thinking about doing. So let's open up the chart. We look at the SPY, which is the exchange traded fund for the S&P 500 index. As I've been talking for many, many weeks, many, many months now, we have been bullish. I've been bullish. The market is going up. The market is going up. And that's what the market does in the long run. It goes up because the stock market is made up of companies that produce products that people want, that people pay for, that if they sell enough of these products, they make money, their earnings go up, and their stock price goes up. That's how the stock market works. And the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones 30 and the NASDAQ 100 are all made up of stocks that are picked by the, the, the makers of those indexes, and they keep stocks in there that are worthy, that are quality stocks, that they deem quality stocks. And so those companies are going to produce products that people buy, and their earnings are going to go up. Now, not all stocks are successful, obviously, but the index itself will continue to go up over time because people keep buying the products and their earnings go up. It's just this repeating cycle. So as of now, with the pandemic, at least here in the U.S., we have almost half of the U.S., I think it's half now, that, or more than half, have had at least one dose of a vaccine. And I think for, you know, low 40% uh, of all adults here in the U.S. have full vaccination. So the U.S. is completely opening back up People are going out, they're spending money. That means they're buying more products. That means stock prices should go up in the long run. In the short term, you know, day to day, week to week, prices are very erratic. But in the long run, prices will go up. Stock prices will go up. So I, I drew this, I have this little triangle here. This is called an ascending triangle. And this is the S&P 500. Now between this week and last week, the last few weeks, we really have not had a lot of movement have not had a lot of movement. And that's what happens during the summer. You get the summer doldrums. People go away, take vacations. They, you know, they just step away. So trading gets subdued and you get, get these, these, you know, sideways patterns for a while. And that you can see that right here. We haven't had a big move in the S&P 500 for a little bit, but this ascending triangle is a bullish setup pattern. Okay. You got the uptrending price action and you have this resistance area. And it and and the and the stock keeps you know bumping up against the resistance, just waiting to break through. And once it breaks through, then it moves on to the next leg of the bull run, which is exactly what's happening here in the S and P 500. And you can see the last two days. This is Thursday and Friday this week. 
the SP500 moved above or the SPY moved above the resistance line, which is an excellent sign that the next bull leg is going to happen. When you have enough people watching the same patterns, it becomes this self-fulfilling prophecy that, okay, we see it breaking out. It's time to get on board. So you get this rush of orders, these buy orders that will continue to push it up until the next pattern develops, whatever that may be. So I can see here, this is a good sign, S&P 500 moving above resistance. This to me is the signal that the next bull leg is going to happen, okay? But once again, it's the, tr it's the pattern, the ascending triangle pattern that I like, that it is making me bullish. So if you've been thinking about getting on board, you know, this could be your signal. Now I talk about a self-fulfilling prophecy. If enough people see the same technical pattern, they get on board. You know, sometimes that's regardless of the, the fundamentals of the company, okay? People keep saying stock prices are stretched. You know, their fundamentals don't, don't reflect where the stock price should be. Well, that's how it's always been. I mean, if you look back at the history of time, okay, here's the monthly chart of the S&P 500, 2008, and, you know, that we had the meltdown, and it's just gone straight up from there. All along the way, people were saying the fundamentals don't match up with the stock price. The fundamentals don't match up with the stock price. The fundamentals don't match up with the stock price. But yet stock prices keep going up. That's just how the stock market works. Yes, we'll have pullbacks over time, which is good. We need those pullbacks to kind of reset things and shake out the, the weak hands. But it goes up over time because that's what the stock market is supposed to do. As long as the the stock market is composed of companies that cr keep creating products that people want to buy, then the stock prices have to go up, right? Who's to say that a fundamental of a company has to coincide with a certain stock price? It doesn't make sense. Yes, you can look at long-term parameters of, of price to earn it, PE ratios, and whatever else, whatever other fundamentals people concentrate on, of course, stock prices are going to look stretched at some point, but yet they keep going up. So you have to reset those those fundamental values. I'm a technical guy. I look at the charts more than anything else. And because I assume everything with that's known about that company gets reflected in the charts. So I look at the charts and so do millions and millions of other people. When they see this thing breaking out above this ascending triangle, they're going to start buying it as well. That's just how it works. Okay, so that's the S&P 500. Let's take a look at the Dow. Let's take a look at the Dow. The Dow has been very flat. You can see right here, very flat over the last couple of weeks, not really going anywhere. Um, has not hit an all-time high recently. Here's the all-time high back on May 10th, about a month ago. And you know what can we draw? What can we see? Well, you know, the Dow, just like the S&P 500, is going up. You have the, you know, you can draw these, these, um, you know, when you draw trend lines, it's a little bit more art than science. Okay. It depends where do you want to, you connect the lows, you know, do you want to connect it here? And then you can also have, you know, the resistance line here, you draw it over. So it's sort of making a little triangle pattern as well. It's in the eye of the beholder, depending on how you see it. You know, so the Dow could keep working its way sideways for a little bit, but you can't deny that it's going up. And we have the 20-day the simple moving average, the 50-day the simple moving average, and the 200-day simple moving average. All of them are sloping upwards. I'll take this off so we can see better. They're all sloping upwards, which is a good thing. Stocks are, when stocks are in an uptrend, you want to see the moving averages in an uptrend as well. Okay. My RSI indicator down here, which is an overbought, oversold indicator, is right in the middle of the range, you know, 50 something. It's telling me we're not overbought, we're not oversold. It's just got a nice slow move higher, which is good, which is what we want to see if you're bullish. Okay. People always try to pick tops. People always try to pick tops saying, this is it. Here comes the next bear market. It may go down for a little bit, but then it keeps going up. So I don't I don't get on the short side because the market just goes up. You have to be very nimble and have to be very quick if you want to make money on the on the downswing. So let's take a look at the NASDAQ, which 
was has been the weakest of the three, but has really started to catch up. Now I have these, I leave these patterns on here over, over the week so we can see how things have been shaking out over time. Now the NASDAQ has been the weaker of the three, but when it starts, when people start to buy, it, it, it catches up very quickly, okay? Now we can also sort of see, we have the, the W pattern, okay? We talked about the W pattern. You can kind of see the W pattern here. And once it gets above the resistance line, it'll probably start to move pretty good. Uh, let, let me just let me just blow this up a little bit so we can see it better. So you can see the triangle pattern, okay? Move, I mean the uh, the W pattern. Blow this up a little bit. A little bit of manual labor, as I like to say. So you can see a W pattern is pretty bullish. Okay, apply. We got one more. Do this one right here. Okay. So it's all about looking for patterns. It's all about looking at trend lines, support and resistance. So now we have the W pattern, which is, is a bullish pattern. Okay. All it has to do is get above this resistance line. Doesn't always happen, but it's there for you to take a look at. Once it gets above this line, the NASDAQ should start to move up on all time new highs as well. So we keep an eye on things, see what's happening. Otherwise, you know, it's been in this sideways channel for a bit. Um, you know, it could get knocked back down and it could start to move back down towards maybe the, the 200 day moving average if, if there's a lot of sellers that come in. So keep an eye on the, on the NASDAQ. You want to see it get above uh, this resistance level if you do your own charting as well. All right, let's take a look at some individual stock charts. But for the most part, I, the indexes look strong to me. Looks like they want to go up, especially in that, that, that S&P 500. So let's take a look at some individual charts. I want to show you the, the ascending triangle pattern on some other, some other charts to show you how strong that pattern is. So let's take a quick look at Cisco, Cisco Systems. Cisco has been making or had been making the, you can see the ascending triangle pattern. It's got the upslope and the flat top. And just this past week, the last couple of days, it broke through it. Okay. It broke through it. It's got the momentum building up. It's trying to blast through it. It's got all this pressure. And once it goes through, it goes through pretty strong and it should have some follow through. You want to see a couple of days worth of the breakthrough before maybe deciding to say, okay, this is a strong indicator. Then I want to get on board. So you wait for a couple of days to see if it blasts through. Cisco looks pretty good. So uh, Oracle as well had made the same pattern, okay, not that long ago. Oracle, ascending triangle. This is this is a classic pattern. Oracle, bla once it finally got through, look how hard it blasted through. It's pulled back a little bit, and it may be gearing up for the next next leg higher again. Sometimes when it blasts through, it likes to pull back a little bit. Uh, as long as it doesn't fall back through the resistance line or the triangle, it should probably it's probably gearing up for its next leg of the move higher. Okay. So that's Oracle Cisco. What else I think was, um, I think IBM may have made a pattern. Yep. IBM as well. Here's IBM international business machines. Also ascending triangle pattern blasted through pretty good this week. Okay. So you want to look for these patterns on the chart. How do you get a little bit more education on these? Well, let me take you to another website which i've shown before chartpatterns.com chartpatterns.com here's the ascending triangle pattern it, it, it's, it gives a quick little synopsis of what these patterns are and what you can look for okay you scroll down the page you can click on any of these links it'll show you examples you click on the ascending triangle box right here and it'll give you more of a definition of what it is Okay, you can see these are these are the exact patterns that I've just shown you on the charts. And once it gets through the resistance, it's off to the races. Okay, so these are the things you want to look for on the charts. It's all about pattern recognition, support and resistance, and watching the trend. The trend is which way is the stock moving? Okay, and we know our physics, uh, an object in motion tends to stay in that same motion until something moves it in a, in a different direction. It's the same thing with charts. It's the same thing with stocks. Here's the S&P 500. It's going to keep moving in that same direction until something comes along and knocks it back down. Well, what, what would that be? Well, we had the pandemic last year, February, March of 2020, something like that. Otherwise, if, this, if the company 
is still making good products and people are still buying, it's going to keep moving up until something happens. Maybe a disastrous earnings report or the CEO of the company has been fudging the numbers for the last five years. Something like that will will turn the tide. But otherwise, if the news is decent and earnings are decent, why would the stock start to go down? It wouldn't. So you watch the trend lines, you watch the momentum, and, and you play it until it shows you otherwise. Okay, so let's take a look at some individual stocks we always do here. Uh, let's take a look at Apple. We always look at Apple. Now, Apple is really hasn't gone much anywhere since you know last August, last September. It hit a high last August, meandered around, hit a new high back early in this year, and has just been kind of consolidating. It really hasn't gone anywhere in you know nine or ten months, just kind of hovering between you know one ten, one forty dollars a share. And you can see, look how tight this range is right here. It's a very small range right here. It's going, it's gearing up. When it, when it, when a stock trades in a very tight range like this, it's building up this energy. It's going to explode one direction or another. And it's been hugging on the 200-day moving average. It does not, doesn't seem to want to drop below. We can see here, one, two, three. It has, you know, had three attempts to go down below the 200-day moving average. Not a lot of people want to see Apple drop. Okay, so they're defending this 200 day moving average and it bounces off and it goes back up, but it's been really tight, been really tight. Eventually, Apple is going to move hard in one direction or another. It just needs a catalyst to do that. What that catalyst is, I don't know, but eventually something will happen. Obviously, I want it to go higher. I'm long Apple and I've just been kind of waiting around for something to happen and it's just not. It's not following through in one direction or another or another. So you got to have some patience. And this is a thing where if you're an option buyer and you've been buying Apple call options, hoping that it'll go higher, this is where that time decay has been killing you, right? It just, Apple's not going anywhere. So you're losing money day after day if you've been an Apple buyer, option buyer. If you're an option seller, this has been great for you because the time decay has just been eating away and, and giving you a profitable position. All right, so that's Apple. Um, we looked at Microsoft, uh, in that, in the, uh, example for time decay and Microsoft has been in this nice little uptrending channel. Okay. You can draw the channel lines, you connect the tops, you connect some of the bottoms, how far back you go. I don't know, you know, three to six months, you, you, you draw some tops, draw some bottoms, and you can see it's been in this pattern. Now it, and it bounced three times off the bottom here. So if you're looking to potentially get long Microsoft, you know, follow the patterns. If you see that it's bouncing off the trend line, maybe it's time to buy. So here was your last buy. So now Microsoft may start to go up towards this top line. We can draw, we can remove this and, and oops, let me get rid of this and we can draw a new one. You know, we can extend the line out. We can go from here, just draw it a little bit longer. So it'll give you an idea of where it may move to if it continues to move up. Okay, so that's the channel. Um, let's take a look at some other charts. Tesla. Tesla's had a pretty ugly chart for a while, but just like Apple, it's been it's defending this 200-day moving average. This is the the granddaddy of moving averages. You, this is the last line in the sand, and you can see it's dropped through the 200-day, moved above it, dropped below. So it's really fighting this 200-day moving average right here. The longs, people that are bullish do not want to see it really go far below the 200-day moving average because that could really spell some trouble on a technical basis. So you really need Tesla to get going again. You can also maybe draw another little triangle pattern. Um, there's a congestion pattern. Eventually, it's going to blast out higher or lower in a strong way. You can see all these other triangle patterns that we drew. So Tesla has a habit of, of making these triangle patterns and then and then going in one way, but then falling back again. So Tesla's, this is a very ugly chart. I really can't decide what, what I think about it. You can also draw some support here down around the 550 level. That seems to be a floor for now that Tesla does not want to drop below. So you got a floor here maybe. Um, you know, if you want to get long at some point on Tesla, however that may be, buying some shares of stock 
or selling some put options or put option spreads or buying call options, whatever, you know, you want to make sure that it doesn't drop below 550. So maybe you wait to see some more confirmation that it's ready to start moving up. But Tesla, uh, it's a very ugly looking chart. I'm, I'm, I'm not making really an assessment either way. In our newsletter, we have sold put spreads. Put option spreads is more of a neutral to bullishly directional trade. But we have a lot of cushion. Okay, We have a lot of cushion uh, on this trade. So hope we don't want Tesla to fall too far, but we do have some cushion there. Let's take a look. What else? Uh, Walmart is another big one that we like. Walmart, um, you know, the biggest of the biggest physical retailers. Uh, it's all also kind of just trading in this narrow range. All the, the moving averages, the 200-day, 20-day, 50-day, they're all kind of converging. They're getting very close to each other. When that happens, eventually the stock will explode one way or the other. Um, you know, let me get rid of this, get rid of this line, see uh, if I can see any kind of pattern here. You know, not really, not so much. It's just kind of meandering around. Um, nothing to really gain from this chart. Just, it's got a little bit of an uptrend, but overall it really hasn't moved much since last August too, just like the Apple trade, just kind of in that same range. Nothing really going on with, with uh, Walmart. What else do we have? Some of the, the uh, pharmaceutical companies got a boost this week. Eli Lilly ran up $20 the other day. I think that's the biggest move in the one day move in the history of that stock. Uh, I was very surprised. So there was some news out. Uh, so this is Eli Lilly, Merck, all the stock. Whoops, I don't know what's going on with Merck here. It's bad tick. There's a bad tick in the charts. But let's not look at Merck. Uh, Bristol Myers, Bristol Myers, you know, had pretty good move this week. So some of the healthcare stocks had a, had a good move higher this week, um, but really hasn't gone much Bristol Mars. Let's take a look at, um, what other, oh, we have Amazon. We always look at Amazon and Netflix. These are the big ones. These are the stocks that people are interested in. Amazon still in this wide range, really hasn't gone much either. Even though it's a very expensive stock, it really hasn't gone much um, since last summer. Just kind of staying in this range. You know, this would be great for option sellers uh, if you're if you're willing to take that risk, whether you're selling strangles, straddles, uh, iron condors, whatever. This would be a good, this is a good stock to do it on, okay? But not really going anywhere. Um, Netflix, still kind of hanging around the lows within its channel. It's, Netflix also has a, a, a wide channel. Here we can, we can redraw this. We can stretch it out a little bit more. Okay, stretch it out a little bit. Still in this range, but starting to move down towards the lows. Here's the last move, a little bit of a down move. So at the moment, it's on a downswing. Where will it bottom? Don't know yet. Don't know yet, but but if you're long net, Netflix, you really don't want to see it fall below this, this long-term line. Not much happening with Netflix. Let's look at some of the meme stocks. These have been active of late. GameStop, GameStop, they had, they were up big and then they dropped big. So this is GameStop. Um, you know, once again, I'm not playing these, but it's fun to watch because the, the, the volumes and the trading ranges are very large. It had, uh, you know, we had a triangle here, had some sideways action, then it finally blasted higher, but it's come down a, a good bit. AMC also got in on the action just the last couple of weeks. Look at this rally, but it's dropped a bit as well. So if you're playing these stocks, please be careful. Um, there, is a, there is a website that, um, let me see, I think I have it on my phone here, it, that shows you the short interest. The, the way these stocks are, why these stocks are moving is because they have a lot of high short interest in them. What that means is that there's big institutions and hedge funds are selling short these stocks, hoping the price goes down. And the, uh, the Redditors, the Wall Street Bets group on Reddit, uh, try to buy these stocks up and try to force the, these institutions to buy back their shares in a, in a short squeeze. So let me see if I could find, what's that website that I use? Um, here we go. So it is the, I think it's highshortinterest.com. Let me type this in. Let me type this in here and see if I get it. High short interest Oh, 
Okay. Yeah. So here's the website right here. Highshortinterest.com. It'll show you all the the highest stocks with the, the, the greatest short interest, meaning there's a lot of short sellers. Now you can see here some of these stocks. Workhorse is is the the biggest, uh, the high highest shortest stock right now. Forty percent of the float, forty percent of the available shares available for that stock is being shorted right now. Okay, Clover was another big mover this week. Um, Geo Group, Link. So you have these stocks that are that are highly shorted. So you got to be careful of these. Let's look at. Um, I know Clover moved pretty good this week. Look at that. So the stock went from, you know, you know, eight or nine dollars all the way up to over twenty eight, twenty nine bucks. But it's come back this week. So it, it, it rallied and then it lost half of its half of its move up. So you got to be careful with these stocks. Um, those are those are some of the exciting stocks happening right now. But you can you can lose a lot of money. So please be careful. What other stocks we look at? PayPal. PayPal is starting to move out of this little triangle pattern. And it's it started to blast higher and it's above the moving averages, which is good. So PayPal could be on its next leg higher if you want to look at, at possible bullish activity or bullish positions on PayPal. I'm trying to see what I've seen during the week. Um, Procter and Gamble. Okay, so Procter and Gamble, let's take a look at this. Procter and Gamble had been making the ascending triangle pattern. It was bumping up against the resistance pretty good here. Thought it might go through but it got knocked back down, it fell down through the triangle right here. So this has sort of been negated. You know, not everyone works out, sort of been negated here. So um, we, we take a look at, well, I'm gonna remove this now. So now we, we look for what other patterns is there? Well, you can, you can maybe draw a little, you got your resistance again up here, but now you have maybe another little, could be in this channel right here now. You know, it's all in the eye of the beholder. That's Procter & Gamble. Not much happening now. Waiting for it. Maybe it'll try to move back up again. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, AMD we always look at. AMD still, still kind of just hanging around. Uh, very, very tight range this week. Not much happening. Not much happening, but... It hasn't fallen through below this this low line here, around seventy four dollars or so, and up here, you know, that's just not much happening. Had a couple W patterns that didn't follow through, so AMD is just kind of kicking around, not really doing much sideways action there. Let me see what else we got. Let's see what else we have. Disney, Disney is sort of okay. So I had drawn this downtrending channel before this is, we've had this on for a few weeks now probably so disney's in this little downtrend channel okay downtrending it's right now it's bumping against the upper line of the downtrend channel so if you're thinking oh maybe maybe i'll buy some put options or sell short some shares at disney you might want to wait until you see that it start to move down again because if it pops above the, the upper resistance line and gets above this 50 day moving average, that could mean Disney's on a, the next leg higher finally. But if it, if, it, if it doesn't get through it and starts to tick back down, <clears throat> that could be your signal that Disney's still in a downtrend, okay? There's another one, Clorox, I wanted to show you that, which is in a downtrend. Clorox has been in, in a long downtrend here. Look at this thing. It was in the uptrend and then something came along to knock it down and now it's in this, this pretty wide, this this downtrend channel right here okay so this is clorox now you don't want to get long a stock in a downtrend until it shows you otherwise here you you wanted to stay long until it showed you otherwise now it's in a downtrend so clorox has gone from one extreme to the other okay so if you're if you're thinking okay well maybe i want to get short or, or bearish position on clorox you have you have the momentum on your side. So I just want to show you these patterns. All right, so we're getting close to 50 minutes here. I think that's all for now. Um, lastly, let me show you the VIX. The VIX is the volatility indicator. Getting back down to lows, 15 under 16%. Getting back down to those, those values right before the pandemic hit back here. So we're right in that. So volatility's come down. 
That means option prices have come down. People are more complacent. And that just means the stock market has had this nice slow move higher. And that's what happens. Volatility and market action move in, in opposite directions. All right. So that's it for your Saturday synopsis of stock market. Stocks still look strong. Keep an eye on this S&P 500. Keep an eye on the 425 level, roughly. If it gets through that a couple days, it's probably going to keep moving higher. All right. So I hope you all have found this today's video helpful. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that red button in the bottom right-hand corner of the video. Send me an email. We'll go to our website, smartoptionseller.com. Here's our Put Selling Basics free guide. If you want to learn about selling put options, which is what we do, put your name and email address here. We'll send you a free copy. Also, our services, services tab. We have our two newsletters and our one-on-one -on -one coaching. And last week, I know I mentioned our deep dive webinar into put option selling. That's sort of um, still in, in, in process here. So if you have interest in, in a deep dive seminar, you know, keep, keep checking back here or send me an email saying you're interested. We'll make sure you're on the list. Okay, that's all for me today. I hope everyone has a great weekend and a great trading week ahead. This is Lee Lowell signing off.